Yeah, I did it the summer that my grandfather passed away. And uh, Mother Grissom seemed so sad that, uh, and I was teaching school in Sparta, so I had the summer off. And I told her that uh, if you want me to, I'll run the cafe this summer. And it was uh, uh, interesting running the cafe <laughs> compared to uh, just helping around the cafe in the store. So what was it like on a normal Saturday night? Oh, it was, hop it was hopping. Yeah, Friday night and Saturday night. Uh, and some customers were just regular customers the summer that I ran it. Uh, you know, you just, you knew they were coming and, uh, and you knew what they liked because they usually got the same thing every time. Welcome to another edition of Community Insider. Join us as we travel Middle Tennessee, uncovering history and experiencing the adventure of unique stories and events coming to you inside your community. Thank you for tuning in to this edition of Community Insider. I am Tisha Amberton, and with me are the Dunlop brothers. Uh, this Doug, is Doug, Doug. and this and is David. David. And uh, they're going to reminisce about some stories about uh, their grandpa and grandmother. Uh, what, did, what did y'all call uh, Brownie Grissom? Uh, Papa and Mother Grissom. Okay. Yep. And can you tell me some good stories about maybe what what it was like growing up there around the store? Uh, my dad was in, or our dad was in the service, and we were gone a lot of times, but we'd come in, and uh, a memory that I have that I just love, <laughs> we'd tie a little sack, put nuts and bubble gum in a sack before you went back, and maybe an orange or something, and yeah. tie it and uh, with a white string, a brown paper sack, and then give us that when we left to go back to whatever base my dad was stationed at. Now what was the name of the store there? Um, originally, we, it was A.W. Grissom. The, hit my grandfather's father built the store. Um, and my, I know my grandfather owed him $600, and once he paid that off, it became uh, Cecil Grissom, C. E. Grissom General Merchandise. Okay. It was A. W. Grissom Merchandise before that. And, uh, you also helped run the uh, Brownies Driving, correct? Yes. Yeah, I did it the summer that my grandfather passed away, and uh, Mother Grissom seemed so sad that, uh, and I was teaching school in Sparta, so I had the summer off. And I told her that uh, if you want me to, I'll run the cafe this summer. And it was uh, uh, interesting running the cafe <laughs> compared to uh, just helping around the cafe in the store. Yeah. What kind of stuff did y'all serve at the? Uh, um, at the at the Bernie's uh, cafe, we sold uh, hamburgers, hot dogs. Uh, French fries, that was the main thing. And then the, all the other little things that you can cook on the grill and, and fry in the deep fryer. Um, when I ran the cafe, I started changing a few things, making a double hamburger instead of just one hamburger. And, and uh, instead of just doing the normal French fries, sometimes I'd buy regular baked potatoes and I would cut them up and put a those in the fryer, and it made for a different type of French fry. Oh wow! And uh, but uh, we had uh, 
Seems like roses, ice cream, I could put a dip in there and- Red rose. Uh, red rose ice cream. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's interesting in a way is what things cost back then. It was amazing compared to now. Uh, like a, uh, a hamburger, the best I remember was 20 cents and a hot dog was 15 cents. And it seems like a, a Coke was maybe a dime and over at the store, it was maybe three cents or five cents, at least it, maybe before the cafe started. But the price of things, I think a milkshake might have been a, I think a banana split was like three dips of ice cream and all that other stuff on there. Mm. Seems like it was maybe a quarter. Wow. Instead, of, and a dip of ice cream was a nickel. So it was, you know, I had banana, a banana split in half. You know, the prices were in the, the little girls would be car hops during the afternoon, evening, and you know, after school, because it was usually school girls. And uh, uh, during the day, Mother Grissom ran the cafe, but she had a lady. The one I remember was Lena Ray. Mm -hmm. And uh, she ran the cafe till, in fact, the summer that I ran the cafe, she still ran the cafe in the morning. So I didn't even have to I think she opened up, I can't remember, because I don't think I had to be there at six o'clock, which I think is about the time they opened. Mm -hmm. And actually my dad ran it some too, for a few years. Our dad did that. Mm -hmm. And uh, So you'll uh, have breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think during the week we may be closed at nine, and then on the weekend it was open until 10 or 11, something like that. But. Uh, it was a busy place. So what was it like on a normal Saturday night? Uh, oh, it was, hop, it was hopping. Busy. Yeah, Friday night and Saturday night. Uh, and some customers were just regular customers the summer that I ran it. Uh, you know, you just, you knew they were coming and, uh, and you knew what they liked because they usually got the same thing every time. I got to tell you this, the funny thing about the car hop business, <clears throat> the girls made it when I was there, I, was, I worked as a car hop in the cafe when I was in high school. And the, the girls made a dollar and a quarter an hour. And they paid me a dollar an hour. And y'all are brothers, correct? Yes. Still my brothers. Yeah. Um, how many were there of you guys? Just us two. Just the two? Uh -huh. And who was your mother and father? Uh, Helen and Buddies, what uh, they were called. Okay. And, uh, when I was growing up, I don't know what Doug was called, but in the people in Walling, they called you by two names. So they called me Joe David. Yeah, Douglas Allen, they called and, me. So when I'm uh, away from this area, uh, and someone says Joe David, like uh, this lady, when I called her up one time, I was a commissioner, and she said Joe David. So I knew that, I didn't know she was from Walling until she said that. And I said, oh, you know, yeah, she said I went to school with you. <laughs> yeah. So she's about my age. And, uh, but, uh, uh, and then in school, the, the part that uh, Doug probably didn't go through this that I did, I wanted to be called David instead of Joe oh. or Joe David. So when I was in school, the teachers always call you by your first name. So it took me a little while to realize that I need to stand up and say, look, I'd want to be called David. And I do that at the doctor's office or whoever I go to now, because they, they want to say J your first name. And so I let them know, hey, I'm, I'm David. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did Papa, how did he get uh, the name Brownie? Um, I don't know that, I don't know that. You know that, Doug? I really don't. Yeah. And then his son was named, his actual given name was Brownie Dean. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, Sort of instead of calling him Little Brownie, I guess <laughs> <laughs> he named him Brownie Dean. Okay, and uh, yeah. he finally he was in Nashville for years and years and years, and he moved back here. Uh, I can't remember what year it was, but built a house uh, beside mm -hmm. the post office. Yeah, Mary Lou, she was sweet. Uh, she always whistled, she, she was so happy. Uh, she was a That's not the only reason she whistled. <laughs> <laughs> you know why she whistled when she walked in the house? I do. I yeah. do. We're going to tell that. Tell, tell that. You want me to tell it? I don't care. Yeah. She used to whistle. 
my mother smoked. And she thought that mother and papa didn't know she smoked. <laughs> I, I'm just telling the story the way, it's, the way it is. So mother would whistle when she came in the house. That way mama would be alerted put her to put a cigarette up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she had a little ashtray that the lid covered up yeah. the ashtray so the smoke, you know, wouldn't come out. And of course, Mother Grissom knew, but she did that just to kind of warn her. I mean, you can't smoke and someone walk up to you and not, they know you smoke because it's all in your clothes. <laughs> of course. And, uh, and your hair and body. But, uh, yeah, she was a, just a, and she was happy all the time. I mean, she really yeah. was. Yeah. And she was always bending over. There was a, some flock out there, thrift. Thrift, okay. It's, it grows low to the ground and, and, and um, pretty colors, purple, white. Anyway, she had a bank. It usually looks really beautiful on a bank. You, you, when you go by old roads nowadays, you'll see flock or thrift. And she used to be picking stuff out of it because leaves and things would get in it. So she'd walk by it and, and pick it up. But she'd always be whistling, just like, <laughs> just like I said. And she liked to sing in church as well? Yes, yeah, she did. And actually, she went to the... Uh, she was a, a member of the Quebec Baptist Church, actually. And she played the piano there. And, and in fact, uh, uh, we were talking earlier about this, that uh, how wonderful it was, in our opinion, uh, a most beautiful way women you go. She had been playing the piano that morning, Sunday morning, and she went back and sat down, and the uh, preacher was about to preach, and she said, Brother, and I can't remember who the pastor was. I, do you know, David? I don't. She said, Brother, whoever it was, uh, I'd like to do one more song. Can we do something? And we, I think it was How Great the Art, but I don't know for sure. And then she played that, and they sang, and she came back to the pew and died. Just, wow. Yeah. What a way to go. Yeah. What yeah. a way to go. If she could have picked any way to go, that would have been the way I believe <laughs> yeah. she would have picked. Of course. To go. Now, how many children did uh, Brownie and Miss Mary Lou have? Uh, three. They had uh, my mother Helen was the oldest. Her sister Juanita uh, was middle, and then Brownie Dean was a, a young boy. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> young boy. Can you tell me about the other two, Miss Juanita and Brown and Brownie? Uh, sure. Uh, Aunt Juanita was. Uh, she lived here in Rock Island. Um, her first husband was Johnny Hennessy, and then uh, later on she married Robert Boyd from, from this area. In fact, Johnny and Robert were friends uh, in, their, in their teenage years and so forth. And then uh, Brownie Dean, uh, he just died. At, he died in 2019. Um, and he lived in Walling. When he died, he lived in, in Walling. And I uh, see Brownie had several businesses over the years. Uh, he had a security company when he lived in Nashville. And when he moved up here, came back home, uh, he had a, uh, a place called Leather Works. It was uh, leather goods and, and catering to uh, uh, motorcycle, anything motorcycle related. Now, was this in the Walling area? Or no, actually he started in Sparta. Sparta. And then, okay. he, then he went to uh, Cookville. And then he went uh, on near Baxter. There was a big log cabin house on the way to, from Nashville to Cookville. His wife sold it after he died. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. So uh, what kind of goods did uh, Papa Grissom, uh, Mr. Brownie Grissom, some of you guys will, he had a nickname named Brownie. What, what kind of goods did they have in the, the general merchandise store? exactly what that word means general merchandise it, it, I mean if somebody if he didn't have it he could order it and, and, and get it in you know but I mean shoes clothes uh, tobacco cigarettes candy uh, he had uh, barrels of, of goods back then uh, they sold corn and uh, beans uh, what else was loose, David? Do you remember? Uh, well, he had all the canned goods, the yeah. uh, vegetables, 
in soups and things like that. And he had boxes of cereal. Oh, the meat had, and cheese too. Yeah, he had a, a little reacher that you reach up real high and get yeah. the cereal. Yeah. yeah. Back in the back of the store, he had meats and cheeses and, uh, and he, he had a slicing machine yeah. that would slice the ham or bologna or what okay. everything was in long uh, like a long slab of cheese or whatever yeah and he would make sandwiches and of course sell cheese and meat by the pound um, he also had hardware stuff like boxes of nails uh, barrels of nails and tacks and things uh, he also had all kinds of clothing from pants to shirts to shoes to socks uh, he also, one interesting thing he used to do, uh, he opened a photography, uh, what do you call it, when they developed the film. Mm -hmm. So he took a lot of pictures of fishermen and their fish and developed that. Uh, he showed movies, it seemed like on Friday, Friday or Saturday. Yeah. Uh, he had a 16 millimeter projector. Oh, yeah. And, uh, showed uh, the one I remember the most was Abbott and Costello and uh, what else did he do? Uh, well he sold kerosene yeah, and gasoline kerosene. Uh, outside. It had a thing to fill up your air and your tires Yeah, and uh, which we you know bicycle tires but cars too and you know nowadays you got to pay to get that done. <laughs> uh, I remember I guess on Fridays sometimes a whole bunch of guys would be sitting there around the pot belly stove and they would be playing the guitars and singing. Mm -hmm. So it, it at was... Some, at some point, David, I remember they, they quit renting them to like overnight fishermen people and went to more of a, a monthly rental. They started renting them out by the yeah. month. And that was yeah, some people, especially, uh, the, I remember the old days, you were telling me about somebody that lived back there, uh, that just lived there permanently. That's Will Odell, I think, yeah, is his yeah. name. Now, and, tell me what auto camps is. You, you were telling me that <laughs> they were also called auto camps. Yeah, uh, my basic uh, understanding is you drive your auto in and you, you get out <laughs> and you go in. <laughs> like you do at the... Car hop. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. okay. They were it, differentiating between that and a, a motel like they were all connected. Yeah. These were separate mm -hmm. structures. And uh, I don't know if that's. And the first set of cabins were connected. They, they were. And then behind then, the store. Then across the store or across the road where he built the cabins there. Uh, I do remember one neat thing about the cabins, right? I think it's funny in a way is my grandfather was <clears throat> concerned about renting to people and children. And, and that was a, so what he did was, you remember this, I'm sure, he put the plugs at the top, just down from the ceiling, like in the, in the big room where the uh, mm -hmm. bedroom was and the, right. and the, I guess, living room. Little, and then, then the plugs would be close to the, close to the ceiling. <laughs> So you'd have to have a long plug or a long cord, extension cord, and the, to plug your lamp in or whatever it was you want to plug in. Do you remember that? I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. He's all. He was ahead of his time trying to be safe. I know. I know. You know. I know. Didn't want kids to get hurt. And then our dad. Uh, I remember this yesterday. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Yeah. But since we're talking about funny things like that, my dad built our house, mine and Fran's house in Wallen. And what he did was, he was concerned that you, if you go into a room, you don't know where the light switch is. So he put the light switch on the outside of the door. So like you go into a bathroom or bedroom, yeah. you just flip the light switch on, except the only thing is that just, we were the only ones that knew that. <laughs> Everybody, people walk in, oh, they couldn't everybody else would go in the room and try to find, try to find where it is. When, uh, <laughs> Probably tripped over a few things trying yeah, to get to it. Yeah. See, Mom and Dad yeah. were, uh, my dad was in the Navy, so we're traveling all the time. And uh, so to make that our home base, Mom and Dad bought the cabin further back toward the river, you know. And so it was just a three-room cabin. Yeah. 
And so when we came home, we'd stay there. And then gradually over the years, they would add on to it. So uh, at one point, it was, uh, you know, at the beginning, it was just a living room, bedroom together. And then it was uh, a living room and two bedrooms and a kitchen and a bathroom. Basically, that was it, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And so a few years later, they built a basement that uh, uh, what I remember best is uh, when I was still pretty young, we had a pool table and a ping pong table mm -hmm. together. And then later they built more stuff like a garage that held two or three cars and uh, what do you call it, a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, uh, pretty much what they did to the house after. Oh, uh, the, down in the basement also later they built a uh, beauty shop. A beauty shop for mom because she Heather cut hair. Heather had a beauty shop, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, she was downtown McMinnville. Uh, Helen's House of Beauty. Before they actually built that down in the basement, wasn't it? Because when mom had cancer, that's when she then started cutting hair in the basement, later after a few yeah. years. And then a few years after that, she got tired of that, and, uh, and they bought this uh, other little place up, up the road uh, where now the post office is. And that became uh, mom's uh, hillside beauty shop. Beauty shop and, hillside and, beauty and collectible. Shop. She sold antiques. And collect yeah, she had a lot of antiques. And, uh, and then I guess she got tired of that or something. She's getting older, so then she went back to cutting hair in the basement again. Mm -hmm. But uh, and she also opened up Merle Norman Studio, which is still in McMillville. I tell you a story about Mama when she was young. I don't know how old she was six, seven, somewhere in that area. She used to go across the street from from the store, and the house was next door to the store. She'd go across the street. There were no cabins over there at all, and she'd go sit on the and look over the bluff at the river, and she said she dreamed. I'm going to have a house here. That, that was her dream. I want to have a house here someday. And then she got mad at Papa when he built the cabin. He, <laughs> she built that cabin right where Mama wanted to have her house. And that's part of the reason that's what she, yeah. you know, she, she wanted that See, one. It, you know, I'm probably wrong on this because I never, don't know that I know the price, but it seems like when it was three rooms, that they, when they got it from Papa, you know, she paid them my grandfather, I think it was five hundred dollars or something. Six hundred. Oh, six hundred. It was six hundred. Oh, okay. And and that's why we were still we were still in the Navy when she when she bought it from him, and she paid him. And that's why they started working on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, did uh, Helen ever work at the store or the cafe? Oh yeah, yeah. She was. She didn't work as much. She would just come in when they needed help. Um, my dad, after they retired, he's the one that. Uh, ran the cafe, but yeah, she ran the store too. She'd go over and, uh, when Papa would be sick or something. But actually, I'm not sure I ever remember him being out of the store. Do you, David? Papa was always in the store. Yeah, yeah. He. Uh, That's why when he died, that that was a good place for him to die because yeah, that was. They both, yeah, died in. The, that that was where dedicated the, to the store. Well, yeah. he was there early in the morning. He was there late at night. And the only, time 10, he, I bet the only time he left that store was to go eat. C.E. Grissom passed away from a fatal heart attack in 1975 at the store that he dedicated his life to. And what happened to the cafe after that? That's when the summer David ran it. Okay. And then our dad ran it after that. And then Herbert Winstead, who was a um, dentist in Walling, bought the building and they moved it up the road. And actually it was the first fog light restaurant was that building that was Brownie's Cafe. Really? Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. And then, I, then Fran and I built a house on the property uh, where the cafe was. Okay. And I was in Spain when, when Papa died and came back home yeah. to the funeral. And then I was in California when she died and, and I came back home that year. So you liked to travel or were you in the military? I was in the Air Force for Air 20, Force. Yeah, 20 years. I retired All right. in the Air Force. After I retired from the military, uh, I always had in my heart to uh, preach. 
So I went to, uh, I became an Episcopal priest. And so I did that until um, I, I had a church in Sparta, Epi uh, Crossroads Episcopal Church. But in 19, or 2006, I developed cancer. And so it weighed so hard on me. And then mom and dad died in 2007, 2008. So I was dealing with cancer and their loss. So I just sort of took a sabbatical. And uh, after that, over the years, the church closed down and so it's gone. And then I went to other churches to, to preach, not, not Episcopal, but wherever somebody wanted me to preach. And I preached at Rock Island Presbyterian Church for five years. And then there was, there was a, because that's where we went as a child when we were here in, in Walling, we went to Rock Island Presbyterian Church. So it's special for me to go back there. Do y'all know how long that church has been there, the Presbyterian Church in Rock Island? Uh, 1933. 1933. That's when they built, wow. yeah, they got the, they built it. Sure. It's pretty amazing going into a church like that. Yeah, it is. You know, and knowing the history and knowing that you're a part of that history, yeah. you know, going in there to preach. Yeah. What was it like uh, preaching at the Presbyterian Church with so much history there? Oh, it's just awesome. I just felt so, like I was home, you know, it's like going back home. And then I was, I was also saying about uh, the cross of the Episcopal Church that we were in Sparta. It was originally built as the first Baptist church in 1933. And my grandmother, Mary Lou Grissom, her mother and dad, uh, we called him Pa, didn't we? Um, her name Man, was, I called her Mammy. Yeah, Mammy, Mammy and, and Pa also, I think. But anyway, they were charter members of that Baptist Church. And then, so even then, going to that church was just, I felt so, so at home there because my grandmother and, and my great-grandmother and grandfather were involved in that church. So it was just a, I've been to two different churches that I have a great history with growing up. And yeah. tell me about your life since the cafe. <laughs> since the cafe. Mostly, <clears throat> I taught school. Uh, I worked at Plateau Mental Health Center four years. Uh, I ran a YMCA in Louisville one year. Not a YMCA, but the youth department of the YMCA. Louisville, Kentucky. Um, taught school in Sparta. And then I finished about my last 30 years in McMinnville, and I retired in 2006. And but I still kept coaching tennis, and I stopped coaching tennis for I think it was seven years, and then three years ago they needed to coach again, and nobody was going to do it, so I came back, and I coached high school the last two years. This school year, I gave up high school because I found two guys to take it over, and but I'm still coaching middle school. But if you'd like to coach middle school, I'll, <laughs> I'll give that to you. And then I'll go back to just playing golf and tennis all the time. Thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of Community Insider. And we look forward to seeing you inside your community.